So a little over a year ago, I was gifted my first vermicomposting worm bin. And I filmed this video called, I am a worm farmer. And so began my love affair with worms. Since then, I've learned so much about vermicomposting. So much so that we've even expanded the worm farm. Some of you guys know we now have a giant six tote worm bin set up in the garage. With the addition of these new bins, my gardener's worm bin now needs a new home. And what better home for it than my mom, the new urban homesteader. Feeling inspired by joining me at Homesteaders of America last year and the virus that shall not be named, she has decided to become an urban homesteader. So yes, my mom is officially becoming an urban homesteader and it's my belief that every urban homesteader needs a worm farm. So today we are setting up her stacking worm bin. I am so excited to get this worm bin set up for her because with it she will be able to create so much black gold from the comfort of her own home with a very simple setup. But I'm excited to film it and share with you guys how you too can get started with making your own compost using worms even if you have a really small space. My mama says that not everybody knows how to subscribe so let's do a quick lesson on how to subscribe to this channel. You scroll down, you hit that big red button and you hit subscribe. And then once you've done that, you hit the bell next to it and click all. So you get all the notifications about every video that I post around here. And I try to post at least once a week, sometimes more if we're feeling saucy. Well, hey there, welcome back to It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie and I am an urban homesteader out here in beautiful, sunny San Diego, California. To power this urban homestead, you know what I love to use, worms. Welcome back to another video in this vermicomposting series where I'm helping you guys get started with vermicomposting, even if you have a small space, answering your questions along the way. If you have any questions, don't be shy, leave them in the comments down below or hang out with me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll leave the links down below as well. Now, without further ado, let's set up this stacking worm bin. All right, my friends, now brace yourselves for my very best Vanna White impression. This is our worm bin basin. This is where a lot of the liquid is going to be collected, and it's going to be where leachate forms eventually. For the purposes of setting up your worm bin, I recommend that you open the tap to let all of the liquid out. I couldn't remember which way was open. Luckily, Gardener Supply provides a nice little sticker as a reminder. And by flipping it this direction, I've opened the tap so that when we set up our worm bin and water it and all that jazz, all the liquid can flow through. Now, no worm bin is complete without one of these little mesh screens. I love this mesh screen because it protects this tap from getting clogged with worm castings or worms should any get through. This is the first layer of our worm bin. This is where your worms are going to live for the first part of their life in your worm bin. You'll get the hang of how this all fits together in just a little bit. This is the second bin of the worm bin. This is where your worms will eventually make their way to. This is where they'll spend the rest of their days before you collect those worm castings from below. And to top it all off, we've got a nice lid. I really like the lid. I feel like it adds a really nice aesthetic touch. And it protects your worms from predators and things like that. Wasn't sure what more I could show you about the bin, so let's just hop into talking about supplies. All right, so let's talk supplies. First up, you are going to need some cardboard or some paper bags. I'm using some leftover grocery bags. Wait for it. You'll also need leaves. <laughs> I'm using about a grocery bag's worth full of leaves, and I collected these last fall. You will also need some compost. This is some unfinished compost, which is great because the worms can basically finish it for me. Kellogg's makes a great semi-finished compost if you don't have any on hand. Also, this is vermiculite. Vermiculite is going to be great for the worm's digestion and helping regulate moisture. Also, kelp meal. Kelp meal is like my secret weapon when it comes to composting, as well as azomite, and I go more into depth in these on my blog. Let's talk about food. I'm using some eggshells as leftover food scraps as well as some bananas and some calendula cuttings. Also, you need your worms. Don't ask me why I'm using this Pasta Perfetto pasta cup, but here it is. It's what I use to scoop out my worms, and a handful will do. As you can see here from this very unfocused picture, I'm using red wigglers. Last but not least, you'll need a little bit of H2O. That was super anticlimactic. <laughs> 
And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the setup. So those brown paper bags are going to be what forms the base. This is gonna protect any worms from escaping. Then we're gonna to top that with some leaves. Leaves make an amazing mulch and bedding for worms. To that, we're going to add our compost, our composted mulch, uh, whatever you have on hand. Then you're gonna add some of that kelp meal. Next up, you're gonna add some of that vermiculite. Then to that, you will add a little sprinkling of azomite. A pinch of all of these does the trick and just water that down and make sure it's nice and moist for your worms. Now, remember when I told you to leave that tap open? This is why. As we start to water the worm bin, as we create these different layers for the worms to live in, a lot of liquid is going to flow through. And too much liquid held in the basin of our worm bin is problematic. So I would encourage you to allow all of that goodness to flow through and water your plants with it. All right, but now back to our setup. We're gonna add some leaves, some compost or some mulch, a little bit of kelp meal, vermiculite, and azomite. Then it's time to put that second bin on there. So as you can see, this first bin for me only holds about two layers of things. So at this point, it's time to call it quits with building our layers of bedding and time to add some food scraps. As you can see, I'm not adding that much. I'm adding a little bit of egg and a little bit of banana. And then it's time to add the worms. So this is me just sprinkling in those worms, making sure that they're nice and dispersed. And I recommend covering them a little bit. Worms don't really like to be hit with water as you'll see in just a moment. Once you've got a nice handful in there, you can go ahead and water it again. I'm really sorry, Mr. Worm, I blasted you with the hose. I felt really bad about that actually. So I'd recommend adding just a little bit more covering with some mulch before you blast them with the water. But you get the idea, you need it to be moist for those worms to thrive. Once that is all moistened down and compacted a little bit and you know that your bins fit together, it's time to call it quits and wait for the worms to do their job. And just like that, we've got our worm bin set up. But I know what you're thinking. You're wondering, what do I do with this next empty layer? Well, pay attention to what happens in this first layer. This first layer is likely to decompress a little bit. And if that does happen, you can add some more of what we just added in that same order until it hits this bin. Once it hits this bin, you can do the same layers again, and eventually the worms will migrate upward. So let's say it's been two to six months, you've got beautiful, rich worm castings in that first worm bin, it's time to set up the next layer. And to do that, we are not going to add cardboard, but we will add our leaves and our compost or our composted mulch. And we're going to add that azomite and vermiculite and kelp meal and water that all down again. Then we're going to repeat that process with more leaves and more unfinished compost. All of our amendments. And a little bit of food scraps on top. And you can add a couple more worms if you need to at this point, but by this point in time you should have a really well inoculated worm bin. And of course we're going to water this all down and make sure that the bedding is nice and moist so that our worms have a nice, happy place to live. And this is a beautiful bin, so why don't you wash off the outside as well and top it off with the lid. As the worms migrate upwards, it leaves you with castings on the lower level. That's kind of the idea behind these stacking systems. Now, I think that these are a little advanced. It took me some getting used to, so if you're just starting out, you might like my first video, which is like the most simple worm bin setup ever, in which you just stack everything in one bin, repeating. But again, I really like this bin. It's very aesthetically pleasing, which is nice if it has to be out in an open space because you live in an apartment or something like that half the reason why I wanted it in the first place. And it's a great setup. It's a really quality piece. This is something that's built to last a really long time. It's not something that's flimsy or cheap by any means at all. And I really like this worm bin and I'm super excited to get it set up in my mom's place. All right, now let's get into a little question and answer because I know you guys have questions about this stuff and I really wanna help you guys get started. So question number one comes from Patricia Ann Putman. I love your videos. 
<laughs> Thank you, Patricia. I really appreciate that. Is there a ratio of how many worms to how big your bucket is? Not really, because if the conditions are right, a handful of worms will turn into thousands of worms pretty quickly. So I keep it on the more conservative side, but I've added as many as 500 worms to like one tote of a bucket. So it's really up to you. The general rule of thumb is that one pound of worms will eat one pound of food and bedding per day. There's not really a rule of thumb when it comes to how many worms to add, but under the right conditions, about one pound of worms will eat about one pound of food per day. Now, that's not to say that you should completely fill your worm bin with food. Like you saw me do, I did not add that much food. It's a really common misconception that worms eat just food. So if you're looking to compost basically all of your food waste, a more traditional compost is probably better for you. However, if you're looking for really nutrient dense, like bioavailable stuff that you don't have to worry about like burning your plants, I personally find that vermicomposting is way easier to start with than traditional composting. So I would recommend to any beginning gardener that vermicomposting is much easier than the traditional methods. Uh, just because, you know, you can look in the bin and see, are the worms alive? Is something happening? Great. Whereas with traditional compost, I feel like it's a lot harder to troubleshoot. But getting back to your question, Patricia, no, there's not really a set number of worms that you would need to add. I generally go with like a handful of worms and that does the trick for me. So I would say if you're just starting off, add somewhere between 100 to 500 worms to a new bin and just see what happens and then adjust accordingly from there. A handful, about 100 worms should do the trick. All right, our next question is from Susie H. Susie H writes, how long does it take to get compost and how do you harvest harvest the compost without losing all your worms? That is a great question, something we're going to cover in upcoming videos. However, generally speaking, it depends on what kind of worm bin setup you have. There's like the dump and scoop method, which is more like the first video that I did. You could feed and then scoop everything aside and then scoop what's underneath the worm layer and then you could harvest that way. An additional measure that you could take at that point would, would be to screen. So you could create like a little mesh screen and then send all of the compost through that. And then if there's any worms, hopefully they stay above the quarter inch mesh and then you can save them that way. Then there's also the stacking method, which is what I showed you guys today. And in this method, eventually the worms will rise up to that next layer. Then you'll be left with the worm castings in the layer below that layer, which makes harvesting pretty easy. Again, it's never really gonna be like 100% that you've gotten all of the worms out there. It's kind of like beekeeping, like there's gonna be a couple sacrificial worms along the way. However, however, depending on how you use the worm castings, those sacrificial worms are still gonna be extraordinarily beneficial to whatever you're doing. The great thing about worm castings is that they're bioavailable and you can add them to your garden immediately. If you accidentally scoop some worms with you and send them to the garden, well, they're gonna be in a great home eating up, you know, um, just becoming part of that soil biome. And so you don't really have to worry about it that way. If you're doing something like aerated worm tea, which I did a video on that up above, you know, you're not gonna to wanna to drown the worms. Do your best to remove them. It's not always gonna be perfect. Uh, but again, the really, like the basics is that there's like the dump and scoop method and then there's the tray method in which you would remove the top tray and then harvest the bottom tray. I hope that makes sense. Stay tuned for more videos on how we're actually gonna harvest these castings very soon. Mildred Arnold writes, temps in my area get cold and I have no home to store. So many, so my question is, will they freeze in winter? The lowest temp is 10 degrees. So like I mentioned in my first video on worms, which you can see right here, which I've linked down below, um, you are gonna wanna keep your worms somewhere between like 50 and 75 degrees. Anything too far below that and anything too far above that is gonna be uncomfortable for the worms. And you could freeze them and they could die or you could, you know, boil them and they could die that way. So that is something to keep in mind with worms. Now the great thing about vermicomposting is I've done it in my house and it doesn't smell at all. And you can do it in such a small space, still get that black gold. Whereas with traditional composting, you need like three feet by three feet and needs to be done outdoors. And you've got like predators to worry about and raccoons and possums and all that stuff. Whereas vermicomposting is something that can be really low key. You can do it under the sink. You can do it in a closet. You can do it next to your back door, you know, like there's a lot of places that you could put that worm in that are gonna keep it in a more temperate zone. 
um, but I would say don't be scared. Just do the best you can to set up that worm bin in a temperate zone in your home and see where it goes from there. And if it gets too cold and you lose some worms, well, you did your best and you tried and you'll learn from that and have some more garden successes in the future. But I really doubt that's gonna happen because now you know. So thanks for submitting that question. It's a great question for people who live in freezing temperatures. Thank you, Mildred. All right, and our last question comes from Christina Taylor. It would be helpful to tell us what you do with the bin. Do you stir it ever? Do you wait a certain time? Could you have put more layers? That bin was only a quarter deep. Now she's referring to the last video I did. And in that video, I did not make a lot of layers, not only because I didn't want to squish the worms, but because I didn't want it to be super heavy when I went to go move it. As you guys know, I deal with a I try to keep everything I do super back friendly as a college athlete who survived multiple back fractures and still deals with pain sometimes. Like I have to be very mindful about what I do in the garden. And so I like to keep things as light as possible, um, but feel free to stack your worm bin up as much as you want. And worms, they're, they're made for that. They're made to go through layers of stuff and, and churn it up. Now, as far as stirring goes, no, you do not have to stir a vermicompost. Again, another benefit compared to traditional composting where you do have to wait for temperatures to get to a certain degree, where you have to wait for temperatures to rise and you have to turn it and water it. Like this is very different from traditional composting in that no stirring is required. And to harvest your castings, it takes anywhere between two and six months. So depending on what items you guys choose to use, I've shown you what the most ideal items are. But again, if you don't have access to all of that, do what you can with what you got and see how long it takes for your worms to break that stuff down. It might take two months. It might take six months. You'll know when they look like this. That's how you know your worms have done their thing and you can harvest the castings. And as far as finding a place to put it, again, I would just recommend putting it somewhere that's gonna be in a temperate spot, like somewhere between 50 and 75 degrees, ideally like a closet, your garage if it stays between those temperatures, under the sink, in the kitchen, somewhere that you'll still have access to it to check on it every now and again. And again, another, another bonus to vermicomposting is that you're not gonna have to check on it every day. It's something that you can check on maybe once every week or two. It's something that's very low key and very low maintenance once you've got it started. Those are all the questions that we have for today and we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this helps you get started with vermicomposting in your small space. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And until then, happy vermicomposting. Bye.